Hi students, in this video, we're gonna build on the concept of Avogadro's law. In the last video and with Avogadro's law, we saw that the volume of a gas is directly proportional to its moles. So if the number of moles increases, so does the volume. But that had to be in a case of, stand, of constant temperature and pressure. In this video, we set a set of conditions for temperature and pressure that are standard so we can use the concept of molar volume. What volume will one mole of a gas occupy? And as we learned in kinetic molecular theory, that gases behave relatively the same no matter what their identity is. We can get a molar volume for all gases as long as we use the same set of conditions of standard temperature and pressure. So the volume of gases can be compressed at STP, which stands for standard temperature and pressure. And when they have, we make a set of conditions. Standard temperature <clears throat> is gonna be zero degrees Celsius. I like to tell students, we always use Kelvin, so your focus should be 273 Kelvin. Your pressure is one atmosphere. So at STP, our standard temperature and pressure, we're looking at 273 Kelvin and one ATM. So now we're taking into account Avogadro's law, that volume is directly proportional to the number of moles. And if you measure one mole of any gas at these set of conditions of standard temperature and pressure, we end up getting the same volume. And that volume is one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters. And the reason why, again, it doesn't matter the identity of the gas, whether it's helium, oxygen, or nitrogen, the majority of space in this volume is empty. There's not much, much interaction with the particles, so they behave independently. So with molar volume as a conversion factor, what does that actually look like? It's about three basketballs. But the most important thing is we can use this molar volume in calculations. So we can use it as a ratio of one mole of any gas at STP is 22.4 liters. How is this useful? So what is the volume occupied by 2.75 moles of nitrogen gas at STP? So the key here is whenever you hear STP, you're thinking one mole, 22.4 liters. Doesn't matter if it's nitrogen. As long as you know it's at STP, one mole is 22.4 liters. So if I have 2.75 moles in one mole of nitrogen, there's 22.4 liters. I see the unit of moles cancel and I'm left with the unit of liters, 61.6 liters. Three sig figs in my final answer because that's what I started with. So you can see how molar volume is extremely useful. It allows us to convert moles to liters, but it has to be in a standard set of conditions for temperature and pressure. The good news is these problems will always tell you if they're under STP conditions. Now this is a little bit different. I know it's STP, so right off the bat, I'm gonna think to myself, right off the bat that I have one mole, then I have 22.4 liters. They do wanna know volume. So they wanna know liters of CH4 gas at STP. They don't give me moles like in the last problem, but they do give me grams and they give me the molecular formula. So I can easily convert grams to moles using what I've been doing all along, molar mass. And the molar mass of CH4 is roughly 16 grams per mole. How did I get that? Carbon has a molar mass of 12, 
Each hydrogen has a molar mass of roughly one. Four times one is four. Four plus 12 is 16. So I can say four grams of CH4. There is 16 grams per one mole of CH4. And then in one mole of any gas at STP occupies 22.4 liters. I see the units of gram cancel, the unit of moles cancel, I'm left with liters, and I get 5.6 liters of CHP at STP, which makes sense because this is roughly one fourth of that. Actually, it is one fourth, just like four is one fourth of a mole. But can we go in the opposite direction? Of course. If you're given liters of any gas at STP, you can quickly go to moles using one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters. That's molar volume. That is the power of using Avogadro's law at a set of standard conditions is we're using molar volume to convert volume to moles. And once I have moles, I can easily go to grams of helium using the molar mass. So eight liters of helium, there's 22.4 liters per one mole of helium. One mole of helium is roughly four grams of helium, and I get 1.43 grams of helium. So hopefully you understand and see the usefulness of applying Avogadro's law at a constant set of conditions, which we will call standard temperature and pressure. The standard temperature being 273 Kelvin, the standard pressure being one atmosphere. And we create a useful conversion factor referred to as molar volume for gases. So thanks for watching and um, I appreciate